Doctor Strange's friend Wong has cancer. Can't magic save him? Welcome to the Complete Story Series, where I take trade paperbacks and single issues, and I break them down to the digestible bites, and then magically read it dramatically back to you. All alterations to the panel, sex, and images are to prevent copyright problems, and all art is owned by its respective companies. This is an older story for Doctor Strange, which means it probably doesn't fit in current continuity that well. Keep that in mind when we go through this, that it is an older one from 2006. But when I asked online what some of the best Doctor Strange stories were that you guys wanted to see me read, you guys said the oath. Our story begins on a stormy night in the waiting room of Night Nurse's office. As Iron Fist and Arana wait to see her for some minor injuries, the exit door flies open and Wong stands there, holding Stephen Strange's lifeless body, stating, he needs some help. His master's been shot. The Night Nurse Linda Carter steps out from the back, telling Danny and Arana that she's afraid that they'll have to come back later. Clearly, she has more pressing matters to attend to. Once Wong and Linda help Stephen over to the operating table, she asks Wong who is his friend, and a ghostly voice tells her, that handsome devil is Dr. Stephen Strange. And if we don't hurry, he'll become a handsome angel. Elsewhere, the small-time thief Brigand reports back to a shadowy figure that he managed to get the elixir, and he managed to stop the good doctor. The man asks how, and Brigand pulls out a silver gun, stating he did it with the help of Hitler's actual gun that he used to kill himself with. With enough negative energy, it can penetrate even Stephen Strange's defenses. Brigand then asks, now that he has the elixir, what's he going to do with it? And the man says that if it does what he thinks it can do, he's gonna pour it right down the drain. While Linda prepares for surgery, she asks Steven's astral projection if he has had any major surgeries, and he tells her, just one. But shortly into the surgery, Wong lays down on another table stating that this is all his fault. He failed to defend his master after he learned of his disease. Not long ago, Steven stumbled upon a prescription for Time Lozar, pills used to treat brain tumors. Wong tells him to forgive him for not telling him, but he wanted to tell him once he found a replacement. He has a rare and aggressive tumor. At best, he has three months to live. Steven tells him, no, I can operate. We can fight this. And then Steven hears the pills in the bottle rattle as his hands begin to shake. He throws down the pills and he tells Wong to grab his coat. They're going for a walkabout. As the two walk around Chinatown, Stephen mentions after reading the manuscript of the occultist Dion Fortune that he learned her research found a series of ley lines. One of those lines led to another dimension with the ancient god Oatkid, the omnipotent, who was supposedly guarding a magical elixir that had the power to erase what troubles the mind of man. Once Stephen opens the portal, Wong tells him that he doesn't have to do this. Fighting a god? We don't even know how that would work. But Stephen says that he swore many oaths in his day. The first was Hippocratic. He'll prescribe regiments for the good of his patients and will do so at any cost. Once Stephen jumps through, he tells himself, oh dear, as he stands before Oatkid towering over him. Back in the current times, Linda finishes the surgery, stating that it doesn't make much sense though. Why would someone steal a sick man's medicine? Stephen leans back, stating, it's not just some remedy for a single rare illness. It's the cure for cancer. As Steven gets dressed, Linda tells him that she knows he wants to help, but he doesn't need to put any more stress on himself. If he does, they may find themselves both dying. Steven gets up stating that they can recover that bottle, and they'll end cancer. He will risk his own life for that. Linda tells him fine if he insists, but only if she can come along. Mainly because if he pops a stitch or Wong has a brain aneurysm, they're gonna need her to repair them. And Steven tells her, point taken. Once they set out, Wong begins to ask where their investigation will start, and Steven tells him in the most uncharted and foreboding realm of them all, the Bronx. Among the mist is Jonah Hill's medical research office, where Steven had sent a sample of the elixir to test before giving it to Wong. Jonas was a doctor that had worked with Steven back when he was an arrogant surgeon, and he stuck with him even after losing the use of his hands. Back then, he even had to hold Steven back from trying to attack Dr. Nicodemus West, the one who had performed Steven's surgery after his car accident. However, as the three of them arrive at Jonas's lab, they see that somebody is already there, and they've destroyed it. As Steven sees the sample that was sent is gone, Linda notices a body the body of Jonas. He was shot with the same caliber weapon as Steven was hit with. The light begins to shine as Steven opens the eye of Akimoto to look for clues stating that no gun-toting thug could penetrate his defenses, not without help. He then sees footprints left by the shot and he begins to follow the trail and he discovers that someone's already trying to cover them up. The three follow the trail and they end up sitting aboard a train. And after a short ride, Steven tells them that he traced a suspect here, a safe house hidden within the folds of reality. So it is time for us to make a leap of faith off of this train. Linda begins to scream as Steven grabs her hand and they all jump. And after a short fall, she notices that they are in a dark room with a single door. Steven says that this door is protected by a security sigil. They may need to physically break it down. So, Linda pulls out a bobby pin, and Steven tells her that he's afraid that that won't work as the door pops open. And he tells her that she should really wear her hair down more often. 
Once they step into the room, they hear a robotic voice shouting, Foreign bodies detected, execute! Steven and Wong quickly jump in to fight against attacking robots, and that's when they hear a voice stating that his boss is gonna love this, and they see Brigand holding Linda with a gun to her head. While Steven is stomping, Linda begins to ask Brigand if he has a deviated septum, because he has a really annoying voice, and it's usually caused by having his nose broken a few times. But maybe she can do it again. She slams her head back, hitting Brigand in the nose and eye, and once she pushes herself away, Wong throws a disc disarming him. Steven then tells him he might feel a little prick with this, and he summons chains to restrain Brigand, and hold him in place for questioning. He asks who is it that sent him to take the elixir, and Brigand says that it doesn't matter. His boss has used some magical crap to keep him from revealing any information, so he will never- But Steven tells him to sleep and Brigand begins to snore. Steven then helps Linda back up and tells Wong to look after her until he returns, and when Linda asks where is he going, Wong tells her into the attacker's mind, of course. Steven jumps through a portal, and he begins blasting away the mental blocks in Brigand's mind as he chases him. But during the chase, he is stomped when a voice tells him that this mortal is under his control. Steven looks up to see Nightmare, and he asks him, since when does he involve himself in the affairs of the physical world? Dormammu appears and tells him, don't look so surprised. Steven then asks him, This is pretty clever, but where is your brother, Umar? Dormammu says that his whereabouts are none of your concern. And then Steven says, Just as he thought, you are not the ones behind this. Umar was Dormammu's sister, and Nightmare had a black steed, not white. Brigand then tells him, Guess who? As all of Steven's past villains appear, but Steven begins to blast them away, and Brigand tells him, Fine, fine, I'm not getting paid enough for this. It's this guy. A man in a white suit then stands before Steven, and he looks at him and Steven asks, Who the hell is that? A short while later, Steven appears back in the physical world, stating that the whole thing was quite strange. The man behind Brigand is someone named Nicodemus West. And Linda asks, The pharmaceutical CEO? Steven then fills her in, because long before that, he was also the surgeon who struggled to save my hands. But that was years ago. Steven then picks up the silver gun that has been used, and he asks, what are they gonna do with him? And Brigand says that they're gonna send him to another kind of prison. As Brigand falls back into the portal in his mind, Steven says sorcerers have little patience for the laws of nature, and even less for the laws of man. Afterwards, they decide to head back to Linda's office, and when they arrive, they see the building on fire. And Steven says this isn't some conventional arsonist, as a giant creature crawls out of the side of the building, spitting fire. Steven tells Wong to get Linda to safety and begins to change out of his street clothes to open his attack. As he flies up, he fires a blast at the creature, telling him, Welcome to New York! And the beam just bounces off, and it swings a tendril, knocking Steven's cloak of levitation out. Linda then runs up, shouting, Get away from her, Patience! Please. And then she too gets picked up and Steven says, this is exactly why I didn't join the Avengers. Wong calls out that he needs to leave, but Steven says that he should know with every investigation, his arsenal grows. And then he pulls out Hitler's gun. He holds out the gun trembling and he tells himself, just keep steady. Remember back when I first held the scalpel, take a deep breath and then bang. The eye of the creature explodes and it drops Wong and Linda. And he lets go of the gun stating, that was ghastly. Last time I ever touched one of those things. As the Cloak of Levitation flies back out, Linda then asks, what now? And Steven tells her that they need to follow the psychic trail of summoning and it will lead them to Nicodemus. He opens another portal and as Nicodemus watches from his mirror, he knows where they are going. They are coming for him. He turns and he casts a binding spell on the three of them. And Steven asks, who taught you to cast the Emerald Bands of Exodar? He tells him, actually, from the same man who taught you. Months after I performed your surgery and vanished, I was left with all of the patients that you had left behind. They were all no longer able to heal and died. I wondered if it was my own failings as a surgeon that cost those patients their lives, but I knew that I had to find you. So, for all of these years, I've traveled until I heard of the legend of the Ancient One. When I found him, I told the Ancient One that I was looking for Steven, and I wanted to help you, so he taught me. Just as a good teacher makes his students feel unique, they quietly realize that most will fail. The Ancient One was not 100% confident that you would survive long enough to become Sorcerer Supreme, so he trained another candidate who was similar. Though I didn't stay for all of my training, I took his magic home to help heal the patients, but I ended up killing them. Steven pushes away the Emerald Band, stating, I've heard enough. No one rambles more than the guilty. And he slams Nicodemus' head into a mirror, telling him, Hand over the elixir! As Steven holds him up, Nicodemus tells him, I can't! You have no idea what you're dealing with. Hilt's research only scratched the top of what this elixir can do. It's a remedy for every single disease. Malaria, AIDS, even the common cold. Steven tells him, exactly, we can save billions. But Nicodemus tells him, right. But if we fix the world's health problems, the world will be stripped bare by overpopulation. Nicodemus blasts him away, stating, your heart is in the right place, but the beat is wrong. And Steven gets back up as Linda calls out to him, it's Wong, he's dead. Steven says, there's no chance in hell that I've lost him. 
This is just a cerebral edema from the tumor. Melinda stops him, stating she knows what happened, but she doesn't know what to do to save him. Nicodemus tells him, I'm truly sorry. And Stephen turns back, yelling at him, shut up, and he binds him. He then turns back to Wong, stating, we need to get you to a hospital. But as Linda tells him they won't make it, they see that Nicodemus has escaped. Over in the executive bathroom, he's now holding the elixir over the sink, and then he hears the voice of Steven telling him, If you do that, the next thing that will spill is your blood. A giant arm shoots out of the ground, and with a simple wave of his hand, Steven destroys it, and Nicodemus begins to escape again. Once he steps out of the portal, he can hear Steven again telling him, You can run all you want, but your failures will always have a way of catching up with you. Light begins to shine as Nicodemus begins to chant, and Steven knows the spell. The Sands of Nisanti. For the next three minutes, neither of them will be able to use magic. So how about they just end this? Steven begins pulling back the gloves, stating, I see. I suppose the gloves will come off then. But before he can finish, Nicodemus starts punching and kicking Steven where his surgery was. He begins to taunt him, stating, Have some dignity! And Steven tells him, Oh, I will. I'm just waiting for you to waste your energy. And he kicks him away. Wong wasn't just my servant. I was also his master, and I taught him martial arts. With ease, Steven begins dodging the attacks, and he throws Nicodemus down. As he gets back up, he walks closer and closer to the ledge of the building they are on, until he slips. Steven tries to cast a spell, but the sands are still in effect, and he watches as Nicodemus falls along with the elixir. Once the spell is finally lifted, Steven floats down to see the elixir broken. But, there's still a single drop left. An astral projection of Nicodemus floats over, telling him, You have a big decision to make. With a single drop, you can run tests and recreate it to save billions, or you can give it to Wong to cure him. The following morning, Wong lays in bed and he begins to slowly open his eyes overhearing Steven and Linda stating how he's been asleep for a full 24 hours. Wong realizes that the drop was used on him alone and he asks, What about the others? Steven tells him, That's not important now. What matters is that you're alive and, well, it's the least I could do because it was you who had saved me. Linda pulls Steven out stating, No, the least you could do is look after your own health for once, so we need to let Wong rest. But as Linda finishes tending to Steven's wounds, he says that he realizes he might not be able to save everyone. Since she doesn't have a place to practice medicine, how would she like to work from here? She says that she can still help all of the other heroes like before, but Linda asks if he's sure that he won't get sick of her leaving her blood-covered scrubs over his magic wands and crap. And he says that she has his word. And the two of them kiss. Now, like I said, this is a much, much older Doctor Strange story, but you guys voted for this on Twitter. So if you want to be a part of whenever I ask you guys opinions for stories, make sure you follow me on Twitter at ComicStorian. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about the movie, and I'll see you next time right here.